Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about Trump's tariffs. Literally, all we're going to be doing is explaining what the hell's going on here. Because I was just reading the paper and it uh, seems like uh, last week, not only was he going after Mexico, but he was also trying to go after Australia and, yeah, India. That's right. So, I mean, you know, this guy is just going after everybody. So, it's not just China. It's not just you know, Russia, it's not just Venezuela he's having a problem with, or Turkey, or Iran, but now again, he's causing problems with now Mexico, and uh, Australia, and now the new, you know, new, uh, new, uh, new guy to the game is India, and so on and so forth. It seems like every single day there's somebody brand new in which the United States is fighting with. He's, uh, they're, they're having some sort of trade uh, war situation with. So what we're going to be doing here today is that we're going to just try to briefly explain my what I think, you know, my humble opinion, you know, what I think is actually happening right now, okay? Because there's just so much going on that it's, uh, you know, sometimes it's it's very easy to lose track of uh, exactly what could be going on. It's very easy for us to, you know, follow a narrative that they want us to follow and, uh, you know, take our eyes off the ball. So, for example. Let's talk about how Mr. Trump got elected. One of the ways, I mean, one, yeah, literally, one of the talking points that Mr. Trump had when he was trying to get elected way back when, a few years ago, um, was the fact that, you know, we're gonna drain the swamp. We're gonna have to change everything around. You know, everything is, uh, you know, no bueno. Um, a lot of, um, you know, uh, for example, like a lot of the talking points that he would have would be talking about these conspiracy theories, you know, that we all have, you know, as to, you know, he would talk about the Fed, he would talk about the fact that, um, you know, the, the, about the petrol dollar, he would talk about like uh, what's going on with all these countries and neoliberalism and all this other stuff. And so, you know, he, he was always saying, okay, we're going to drain the swamp and we're going to fix America. And, you know, these are the things that we're going to do. We're going to go back to what our founding father said. And he was being very specific into what he was going to do. And a lot of people wanted to vote for him. In fact, he, he was either going to do that, or what he also said is like, well, if none of that works, then we're just going to bankrupt the fucking thing, and we're going to just implode the thing. And, uh, you know, just, again, just like a business, we're going to, you know, uh, go through those motions. So, for everyone out there that knows exactly what's going on, we know that the United States of America is not a country. Actually, what it is, is a corporation. They've been a corporation for over a hundred years now. And uh, that's why the United States has been run by a corporation, it has been run like a corporation, and why we really don't have any rights. You know, even though we think we have the Constitution, we really don't have any rights. You know, right now we've lost not just the freedom of speech, but we've lost, you know, uh, m pretty much everything. Everything except the right to bear arms and, and, and barely, you know, because that's, you know, they're coming for that next, so be careful out there. And um, so, you know, right now what's really going to go, what, 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 right now what Trump is really trying to do, in my estimations, is that he's just trying to bankrupt the U.S. corporation. That's it. Because why else would he be spitting in the face of Mexico? You know, going to India and slapping them around. You know, telling China, we don't fucking need you. Um, you know, even telling Australia, hey, we're going to start taxing you. And, um, you, know, and, you know, on your imports and so on. And just going against the whole world. And then, not just doing those things, but then, you know, doing other things like going to countries like Venezuela, like Iran, and so on and so forth, and like Syria, and, and pushing that even further going to places like Saudi Arabia and selling them even more weapons, you know, for them to continue fighting this war against Yemen. And so on and so forth. You know, why, why is it that it seems like anyone that's looking at it from the outside and, and from a non-biased perspective is looking at what Trump and the United States are, are doing as utter suicide. It seems like all the United States is really doing is running itself into the ground. In fact, you know, again, today I saw like somebody tweeted out, I think it was a dollar village, the dollar vigilante, so shout out to him out there, Mr. Jeff Berwick. But he, you know, he tweeted out the fact that, um, that Trump said, oh, our, our iron imports or our iron industry is doing so awesome and great and wonderful and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to see if I can put the picture. Um, and it's, it's done so great. In just one year, we've done like amazing things. And then when you look at the price of steel 
uh, today and you look at the price of steel a year ago, it's like it's literally been cut in half. Meaning that, no, it's been the opposite. Meaning that these industries have been disseminated, just like a lot of things are being disseminated right now. Um, this seems like the country, it, it doesn't seem like it, it is falling apart. The country, the United States of America is falling apart by at every turn that you look at right now. It's falling apart socially. It's falling apart economically. It's falling apart culturally. It's losing its grip around the world in all of these things. Again, it's losing its, its grip around the world as a cultural um, behemoth. It's losing its, uh, its economic um, you know, um, strength. It's losing its, even its military strength because again, you know, we might have like the biggest, most powerful military in the world, but you know, I was watching a Tulsi Gabbard video the other day where she was in Hawaii. Uh, I think it was a Memorial Day, and she was um, and she was there with a bunch of soldiers that were being deployed to Afghanistan, and uh, these soldiers were actually the National Guard. So again, you know, our army, our 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 armed forces are so depleted right now that we are literally using our um, our National Guard, which are supposed to stay within our borders and never leave, we're using our National Guard to go fight these wars. You know, these wars that have been going on for literally longer than 20 years, but let's just say 20 years, let's just say it started around 9-11, uh, but we already know that these things have been going on for a lot longer than that, and um, you know, we're, we're just continually, continuously, you know, fighting these wars that, again, we've all pretty much um, you know, come to the conclusion that we shouldn't be fighting any of these wars. You know, if you ask the typical American, the typical American might not, you know, know the difference between, you know, politicians or what's really going on and everyone's super lost and it's like idiocracy. But if you do ask the typical American, hey, what do you think about these wars? Should we be in any of these wars? Almost, you know, undoubtedly nine out of 10 people are gonna tell you or eight out of 10 people are gonna tell you that we should not be in any of these wars and that we should bring our boys back and so on and so forth. Whether we bring our boys back and not fight a war or put them on the border, that's, that's again, it doesn't really matter. That's what I'm saying. No matter who you ask, that's where, you know, that's the, the opinion. But yet, what are we doing? We, we're now, we're, you know, we're, we're going to places like Venezuela trying to cause a war. We're going to places like Iran trying to cause a war. Which, by the way, we're not going to have a war in either one of these places because, um, you know, if you look at just what's happening in Venezuela right now, you know, it's uh, it's full of Russians and, and Russian... Uh, you know, influence and Russian um, military might pushing up against the United States. You know, you're looking at countries like Brazil and Colombia, which were up until the other day on the side of the U.S. and um, literally um, going up against Venezuela. And now, you know, we're looking at Colombia pulling back a little bit and we're looking at Brazil literally saying, hey, no, we're going to be on the side of Venezuela. You know, what's going on with Mexico, you know, and so on and so forth. What's going on with India now? Again, India now is gonna is the latest one to fall under these these tariffs and uh, and so on and so forth. So why why is all this shit going on? Again, I think it's a controlled demolition. I think it's really a controlled demolition of the United States of America. Right now, once the the economy falls in October, it's gonna be the very beginning of the of the it's gonna be the official fall and death of the dollar and the petrol dollar. Now for anyone out there that you know doesn't know what the petrol dollar is, stop watching this and just start going doing some research. Um, if you don't know anything about the gold standard, don't understand anything about you know monetary history, please check out all the links at the bottom of the description of this video. All the way at the bottom, I have links to um, you know, Mr. Mike Maloney, which gives you the whole history of money and the history of all of this stuff, literally all the way from the Roman times and beyond all the way up, up until now. Very, it's illustrated and very easy to follow. Please, please educate yourself if you don't know what's going on. All right, now, for those of you that do know what's going on, I think that what's really happening right now is that it's the death of the dollar. Now, for anyone that's really, really knows what's going on, you guys already know the death of the dollar has already been you know, in motion. It's already been taking place for a very long time. And it's been uh, like, you know, several years now since, you know, the dollar has been dying. Real quick, let me make sure we're still recording, all right? So it's been many years since the death of the dollar. Sorry guys, I'm using this new uh, lens here. It's not a new lens, it's my older lens, but I just wanna make sure we're, we're still going here. All right, so anyone that's you know uh, been paying attention, we know that the dollar, the death of the petrol dollar has been in motion you know, for a while now. You know, it has been very you know, in motion for a little while now. 
But I really do think that starting this October, you know, once the new economic crash happens, um, this new one, um, I think it's really going to be the end of the dollar. It's going to be the official beginning of the end of the dollar and the petrodollar. Everyone around the world wants the dollar to end. They want that dominance to end. People, you know, people, you know, most countries around the world are more than happy to have a new standard like a gold standard sure i know we want it to be a bitcoin standard and a crypto standard but we got to be 1000 percent you know truthful with you know what's probably going to happen and it's most likely going to be a gold or silver standard worldwide and then we'll figure it out from there but the dollar is already beginning the, its death and right now you know the reason that you see trump literally you know going after all of these countries is because once the dollar falls once this dollar falls, they have to blame it on something. The, you know, the, the, U, the United States Fed, you know, the Federal Reserve, you know, that fake, phony, and false private entity, which we call the Federal Reserve, which prints the money for the U.S., they are the ones that are to blame. The central banks are the ones that are to blame. Most of you guys out here, you guys already know that, but a lot of people have no fucking idea. And no matter how you explain it to them, it's going to take a very long time for them to, to, to get it. So since most people can't really wrap their head around that, then all of a sudden when you hear on you know mainstream media that it's Mexico's fault because of the immigration thing at the wall, or it's China's fault because of the tariffs, or it's India's fault because they're Indian, or it's Australia's fault because they're importing too many koalas, whatever. You know what I mean? Or Iran because Iran and Jerusalem and you know Israel and shit like that. Whatever. Whatever the fucking, you know, reason is, you know, look, look at all of these fucking things happening around the world. They literally got a reason for everybody out there. So it doesn't matter who the hell it is out there. They got a reason for you as to why the economy tanked. All right. Why everything really happened. Okay. Remember, they're trying to get Trump reelected. Most likely the economy is going to be tanking at, in October of 2019. Okay. Now it could be it could be the year after. They could keep pushing this forever and ever. But the way everything is going right now, whether it's the yield curve in, yield curve inversion or the bond market and treasuries and everybody selling everything off, and you know it doesn't matter what you're really looking at here. All the signs are pointing to red. Literally that this thing is about to fall any day now. Now. We know it's not going to be tomorrow. We know it's going to be a few months down the line from today. We're in June 3rd, by the way, but 4th, whatever. But the point is that it's, it's we're almost there. You know, time flies. So right now, he's just getting, the, you know, the whole uh, panorama. You know, um, he's just trying to get the whole um, situation situated so that when the time comes that, you know, the economic... Uh, the economic downturn, the correction, the the depression, okay, the recession, whatever the fuck is gonna happen, when when that finally happens, they gotta blame it on something, on somebody, on on there's a, there has to be an enemy. So again, for some people, the enemy is Mexico, okay. For some people, it's Russia. For some people, it's Iran. For some people, it doesn't matter, okay. He is covering all his bases, okay. And, and again, it doesn't, it, you know, why is he covering all his bases? Because he understands what's about to happen. Now, last week, on, when we were on, a, you know, a live broadcasting on Twitch, BitTube, and DLive, by the way, every Monday and Thursday nights, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Central, um, when, uh, when we were um, broadcasting last week, um, Mr. Mflo out there, um, shout out to Mflo, he brought, he brought something um, to our attention, the fact that the U.S. Mint is now starting to um, print silver quarters and putting them into circulation. Now, they're doing this randomly, but the point is that all of a sudden now, for the first time in, a, in five, I think in forever, the United States government is now issuing silver again. Okay, There's, so each so and so what they're doing is that they're getting your regular typical US quarter that's worth 25 cents and they're now gonna start making those out of one nine nine point nine now they're oh, sorry I got distracted. Now they're gonna start making those out of nine 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 silver. And each quarter is gonna be valued at around three dollars of silver. Now remember each quarter is only worth twenty-five cents. Alright? Again, if you don't know what's going on here, look at the history of money and look at what's you know what all that what this really means. But for you guys that know what's going on, you're like, what? 
exactly. So all of a sudden, the U.S. So now, what? So the plan is that they're, you know, gonna, you know, put all these quarters out into circulation, and it's gonna be random. You know, they're gonna give it to a bunch of random banks and just randomly throw them into circulation. Okay, and not just that, but now they're also, you know, planning on doing uh, silver certificates, meaning. Again, dollar bills, you know, whether it's a dollar bill, five dollar bill, ten dollar bill, twenty dollar bill, hundred dollar bills, what these things are, you know, what they used to be, what they really were, okay, are just IOUs for silver or gold, but mainly silver. So, silver certificates. The last person to issue these, uh, you know, greenbacks, you know, dollar bills, you know, as silver certificates was Mr. John F. Kennedy, and we already know what happened to him. But, anyways, Mr. Trump is now going to start issuing these as well. So, if, you, if you're looking at the big picture and you're saying, well, well, what the hell's happening here? Well, you start quickly realizing that, well, the dollar could fall and it could fall very quickly and disappear off the face of the earth. And if that were to happen, well, then, you know, the, the United States of America, even if it's its own sovereign nation and the only place that these dollars are going to be used are going to be within the U.S., well, they need, they, they need a dollar. They need, a, they need some sort of money because, look, this is what's going to happen, guys. All of a sudden, when the dollar falls, no one's going to use dollars around the world anymore. The only people that are going to be using dollars are the U.S. public, the United States of America. But guess what? All of a sudden, overnight, you're going to get your, your all these dollars are going to get hyperinflated. And just, just like in Venezuela, and just like in Weimar, Germany, just like in other parts of the world, and other points in time, when the currency falls, it, become, it just goes into hyperinflation. So you're going to be paying $1 million dollars per cup of coffee and all that good stuff. And why? Because of all these dollars that are gonna be in circulation and they're not, they're not gonna be worth anything and the only ones that are gonna to wanna to use these things are, the only ones that can use these things are the people within the US. So then what's gonna happen is, is what, what usually always happens is that the, the governments take all that currency back and then they issue a brand new currency, a brand new version of that currency and that's going to be these, uh, you know, the, the silver quarters and other silver coins that they're probably going to release. And on top of that, silver certificates or new, new silver dollar greenbacks. You know, these these uh, dollar, you know, these uh, dollar denominations that are all going to be backed by silver. Okay. Now, again, you know, these are just theories as to what could happen. And the only reason I can come up with these theories is because they've happened over and over and over and over and over again for fucking for hundreds and hundreds of years okay and this is just a new version of what's what's happening here all right so that's why i think that you know right now when when you're looking at every single decision that trump is making by the way i'm not here you know um siding with trump or defending trump or or against trump or anything like that actions speak louder than words okay so let's just see how all this plays out but as of now i'm right in the middle and i have no real opinion if any opinion i have is probably negative but anyways the point is that let's just see how all this plays out honestly just as a, just as a former business owner and having a lot of business knowledge knowing how the mafia works how insurance works how a lot of these fucking things work what i really do th and how trump works and what he's done before with his past hey guys sorry about that had a little uh, battery malfunction. But anyways, like I was saying, you know, just because of my old business knowledge, you know, what I know about, you know, how, you know, kind of like all this system works, knowing what Trump springs to the table, how he made his money, his fortune, his business, and all that stuff, it just, and, and again, we, a lot of us know this, and we've been knowing this since even before he became president. The fact is that it really does seem like Mr. Trump is just running the United States of America into the ground, okay? Make sure we're still filming. He's really just running the United States of America into the ground, like if it was any other business. And just with the knowledge, the fact that we know that the United States of America is a business, is a corporation, and not a country, well, then all this starts making sense a little bit. All of a sudden, we're, we can understand why Mr. Trump is, again, not just running this shit like a corporation, but running this thing into the ground and burning it and literally burning the business down and, you know, getting a, a, the insurance claim. All right, that's literally what he's doing. Okay, and um, we don't know how this is gonna work out. You know what I mean? Again, you know, we've this has happened other times in history. We don't know how this time is gonna work out, but it seems like that's what Mr. Trump is doing. So, how does he do that? Well, first of all, first of all, remember the United States is the biggest debtor nation in the fucking world. Okay, we owe money to everyone. Okay, because we have these dollars everywhere, and these dollars are debt. Okay, so everyone, literally, um, we owe them money. So what happens is, is that all of a sudden, like, 
the United States does not want to pay these debts. So then they start getting into fights with China, with Mexico, with all of these countries. You feel me? And then the thing is that, you know, again, I'm just trying to make a long story long. <laughs> Sorry. You know, the reality is, is that if they renege on the debt, then what the fuck can Mexico, can China do, can any of these people do? Nothing. Okay? Again, we know what, what China's trying to do, what a lot of these countries are trying to do, which is sell U.S. treasuries and bonds, which is U.S. stock. They're, they're, they want their money back. You know, they're not, they don't want to invest in the U.S. anymore. But if all of a sudden the U.S., you know, um, says, hey, we're not paying anyone back, that means that all that money that is owed around the world is not owed anymore. And it's gonna, obviously it's going to be the end of the dollar. But again, th this is the only real explanation as to why he would be doing this. You know what I mean? He's trying to make everyone on, around the world not want the dollar anymore so that the dollar doesn't have a use anymore and therefore the dollar crashes, a.k.a. so does the system, the whole fucking system. All right? The United States of America goes bankrupt, which is something that we should have gone a long ass time ago. We wouldn't be in the mess that we're in right now. And if the United States all of a sudden goes bankrupt and we go through those motions, sure, they're going to hurt and they're going to suck and it's going to be really shitty for many years. But after we get out of that, we're going to be back at the top, assuming we do this and assuming we do it right and assuming, okay, that we can, you know, assert ourselves back at the top. But otherwise, I mean, listen, guys, this is not going to be easy. And by the way, how do we assert ourselves back at the top? Easy. We, you know, once a dollar loses its it's standard you know once the dollar loses its uh you know uh, value as the as the standard around the world then we go back to like a gold and silver standard and then who is the one that has the highest valued currency easy it's whoever the fuck has the most gold and silver so who knows maybe the, the the united states is sitting on a lot of gold and silver we don't know most likely not but we have no idea but again guys the point i'm just trying to make here is that Perhaps, perhaps this guy Trump might actually know what he's doing. He might be perfectly trying to calculate this and trying to bring the whole system down so that, again, it's uh, a minimal um, breakdown for the United States as a society. But, again, guys, you know, we can conspiracy theory this all day long and... Uh, Honestly, it does, it's, not gonna, it's not looking good for the American people. It's looking great for the rest of the world, but it's not looking good for the American people. And no matter how this comes down, whether it comes down quickly in a controlled demolition, or it takes many, many years to break down, it's already breaking down. And we're already past the point of no return in many, many, many aspects. And uh, it's, it's not going to be pretty. Okay, it's just not gonna be pretty, okay? And definitely not gonna be pretty for the United States of America, all right? A lot of countries are gonna benefit from this, but it's not gonna be the United States. I'm telling you right now. And especially as the United States just gets more aggressive and just gets, you know, again, just uh, harder to deal with on the world stage. And most countries right now are all uniting against the United States of America. Most countries, you know, our old foes and our old friends are all uniting, okay? It, the only people that are, are on the side of the U.S. are just uh, the banker nations, you know, the neoliberal nations. So, you know, places like Canada, like France, and so on and so forth. You know, countries that are just banker heavy. But even places like Germany, okay, and other countries around the world uh, are just literally backing the fuck off and they're siding with China, Germany, and the likes of, you know, Iran, Venezuela, you name it. Okay, and now we are like, again, we have been public enemy number one, but now we're really public enemy number one. And it's only gonna get worse and worse and worse. And now, you know, let's just add to the pot the fact that things are getting worse for the typical American on a daily basis. As these tariffs, as all these, you know, um, situations start blooming all around the world, you know, every American is gonna be paying more and more and more for everyday products. Sure, you guys say, oh, we're gonna build more factories and bring more jobs and all this shit over here, but as you do that, it's gonna just hyperinflate everything because you're gonna have to raise a minimum wage, everything's gonna cost more, you gotta print more money, you gotta helicopter drop it, etc., etc., etc. And again, if you don't see the writing on the wall, I don't know what to tell you, all right? Get new glasses, all right? But it's not gonna end pretty, it's just not. And this is just a natural progression of these things. And I would just implore you to keep educating yourself and to start, you know, really taking the proper steps to do what you got to do so that you are not affected negatively, okay, out of all this stuff, okay? Because, again, if you don't know, you're going to be really, 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 really affected negatively. If you do know what's going to happen, you know, you can, you know, you can find a way out. 
all right? Or you can even, uh, you know, um, come out very positive on the other end, okay? So, with all that being said, I really do hope that this video has shed some light into the whole Trump tariff situation. This is, this is just my opinion as to what I think is possibly happening right now because again, none of this really makes any sense and it really just does seem like, you know, Trump could be literally blowing, you know, imploding the United States of America from within. You know, having, you know, making sure that this uh, corporation doesn't exist anymore. All right. And, um, you know, again, there's many, many layers to this. And I really would love to hear your comments. And I really would love to hear, you know, um, yeah, you know, just uh, I want to keep, you know, the, the conversation going in the comments. And uh, and let's see how far we can take this. And, uh, if we, you know, obviously we're going to keep talking about this stuff. And, guys, you know, if, once a situation gets bad enough, just a quick reminder. Once a situation gets bad enough, the dollar's dead, America's on the floor, you know, everything's hyperinflated, and so on and so forth. That's when we're going to have a guy come out of nowhere and he's going to be a democratic socialist, a.k.a. communist. And you already know what the next steps are, okay? It's all, it's all going to be downhill from here. So, please, I'm not saying that we're going to be in fucking full-blown communism. But we could, okay? I'm not saying that it's going to be full-blown socialism, but it kind of already is. So, you know, that's why someone like a Bernie Sanders or people that talk about those things right now are very, very dangerous, okay? And, uh, you know, just looking at the history of, you know, of just our recent past, when we just go back to, like, Germany and World War II, exactly what's happening right now is exactly what happened, you know, back in, uh, in the 30s in, uh, in, uh, in Germany. Okay, guys? So, please... Let's not forget our history, okay? History does not repeat, but it rhymes, okay? And if we do not, you know, hear the, the chimes of history, then we are doomed to repeat it. So please, guys, okay? Let's keep this conversation going. Let's keep talking about this. I don't give a fuck what your opinion is, because honestly, it's we all need... The, we need everybody's voice right now, okay? We need to educate everybody on every aspect of what's going on right now and throw in our two cents and, and try to all as a, as, a, as a, you know, public or what have you, you know what I mean? Like all of us together trying to figure this out. And we cannot let it get to the point as to where it got in Weimar, Germany, as it got with Hitler and all that shit. We cannot let it get to that point. But if we do not educate ourselves and if we do not take the proper steps to, you know, take care of the situation the right way, that's exactly what's gonna happen, guys, okay? We are not immune to this. So please, we gotta start waking up and we gotta start waking up other people and we really gotta start figuring this shit out before we, we are literally behind that wall that Trump is building and we cannot get out, okay? Guys, thank you so much for watching. I want to give a big shout out to all my patrons. I want to give a big shout out to everyone that helps me, you know, by donating to me, helping feed me and Lambo. Lambo's over here next to me. And um, shout out to everyone out there that's always, you know, giving me thumbs ups. Everyone that's always commenting and, and spreading the word on these videos and, and uh, sharing these videos and, and continuing this, this conversation and all learning together. I want to be, seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay? Don't forget to stay awesome. I love you guys, and uh, please, don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon, okay? And uh, most importantly than anything else, have an amazing, awesome, wonderful day. I'll see you guys manana. Thanks again. By the way, manana, manana is a live stream on YouTube. I know, I should have said that earlier. Whatever. Anyways, thanks again for being here, and I'll see you guys manana. Okay, done.